Rachel, so great to have the chance to talk to you today. How are you doing and how's your year been? <laughs> um, you know, uh, the goofiest, craziest year, but just like everybody else, um, you know, but it's, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited that this is kind of as, as the world starts opening up, as, you know, um, people are starting to relax and there's like a little bit more of a joy out there, even yeah. just walking down the street. Uh, the, the timing is really great because I'm sort of reconnecting with how excited I am about the movie and it's, it's a good time. Well, good stuff. Well, let, let's talk about this movie because it blows me away to when I was doing a little bit of research and stuff to find out that this movie is almost 20 years in the making. Hello. Yeah. I mean, come <laughs> on, tell me the story about that. That's amazing that you hung, that you stuck it out this far. <laughs> oh gosh. I, you know, I have a nasty habit of doing that. I have to tell you, I, you know, when I fall in love with something, I do, I stick with it and for better and for worse, you know, the worst being art and commerce, you know, there's supposed to be a balance there. I'm terrible at it, but the, for better, um, I, I feel like if I read something and it's, and it wakes me up in the middle of the night and I'm still thinking about it. And two, two years later, or in my case, 10 years later, 12 years later, um, I'm supposed to work on those movies. I'm supposed to tell those stories. I understand I'm extremely fortunate yes. that I have that option to do that. Um, and yeah, I, I just am incredibly grateful that sticking with them, um, that you know, when I partner with people like Will Aldis, for example, who unfortunately passed away, but you know, I made three of his films, the, the Space Between as a director, the other two as the producer, and you know, my partner Steve Samuels and Milan Papelka and Michael Roy, the, my producing partners, you know, you sign up yeah. and you make a commitment and um, do it. That, the best reason to stick with it is because you still love it right. and you still see it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and it's such an interesting story because first of all, it's, you know, about aging rocker. It's yes. in the nineties. Um, what was it that, that really just caught your eye about this story? Because, um, there's a lot of truthfulness going on in this film. You know, there, there are people probably in Hollywood that are probably scared to watch it because they could probably relate to them. <laughs> Well, you know, it's interesting with a film like this, that's sort of multi-generational, there are different opportunities for, for uh, points in for people, for an audience, for filmmakers. So for me, I, um, you know, I came of age, so to speak, in the 90s. Yeah. And I was always kind of fascinated, you know, sort of looking back, it's, it's a little bit of a short shrift decade, um, but it's so important in within the music business because it was a mishmash. Everything was coming together with hip hop and rap and, and grunge and things were changing. But I think we didn't also know because you never know at the time that some things were gonna be changing forever. Right. And so Napster, for example, forever changed the music business. I'm not in the music business. And right. all of that is sort of not so relevant for me personally, but what it was is we were saying goodbye to a time without technology. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that we, uh, we realized it when it was happening. Yeah. And yeah, I think any um, era that's pivotal to a person is when they are trying to come into their own. And so that was my personal experience at the time. Right. And then you, um, you know, I was going to ask you this later, but I'm going to ask you this now. When you had so much success with a film called, oh, Dallas Fires Club, of course, directed by a great Canadian, so I just have to throw that in there, but you had so much success, so many uh, Oscar nominations and wins, and, you know, it was such a phenomenal film. When you come off a success like that, how much pressure do you feel on your next gig? And now you take this on as a directorial debut, right? So, yeah. you know. Uh, it's a great question. And again, Dallas Buyers Club certainly will always be just one of the great honors of my life. It was very personal to be to me. Robbie Brenner, who was the producer on it, 
forever yeah. brought me in and she knew that I had a personal connection. My uncle having been on AZT and having uh, died of AIDS and, um, and she knew that as, again, I would never walk away until it was done. Um, I learned so much from Jean-Marc Vallée, that fabulous uh, Canadian. And um, I think part of it, it, there was some inspiration there, actually watching him work. I, I could never be the auteur that he is. I mean, he's just, he's on a whole other level. Um, but it also helped me understand how deeply I do understand storytelling on the script level. And it helped me gain some confidence because I think, and I think Jean-Marc would, would, would speak to this, that I was able to talk to him about the story and the plotting and help him um, in the post process in a way that ended up uh, benefiting the film. And that was an amazing experience for me. So there was part of that. The best thing about the success of Dallas Buyers Club is that most of us walked away from that going into every single meeting after that, like, hey, can you do for us what you did on Dallas Buyers Club? And we were all like, no, <laughs> that's that's lightning in a bottle. Of course. That is all the stars aligning. That was everyone balls to the wall, going for it in every way, shape or form. Um, and just uh, kind of enjoying the shit out of the chaos right. at the same time. We're not in that place anymore. Yeah, the, it's yes, it's challenging, but it stands as a singular experience that was pretty life-changing for a lot of us. I'd say, yeah, it was a brilliant film. And, you know, Thank Jared you. and Matthew, I mean, oh my God, oh. Just brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. brilliant. Well-deserved. Yep. Um, so when yeah. you, you start working on this one and you cast Kelsey Grammer, now this is a Kelsey Grammer, like we're not talking Frasier here. I mean, this is a guy who we've never seen before. His look, his attitude, his, you know, he put on some weight, I mean, whatever. Was, the, was there a collaboration between what he was going to be with this character or, you know, where did that come from? You know, oh my goodness. I, I credit Kelsey with um, wanting to, he didn't hold back. He wanted to go for it. I was finding myself being the one to be like, hey, are you okay with the naked thing? Like I kept waiting for him to be like, you know, I'm not showing my ass. You know, I'm not gonna run around naked on drugs. Like, But he just, he never said those things. I found myself like caring for his whole, uh, you know, just, hey, are you okay? You know, is this gonna, this doesn't damage Frazier, does it? You know, whatever. But only because he's so kind and giving, I felt like I, I wanted to protect him yeah. from himself because he was so ready to go for it. But honestly, we connected on a collaborative level within minutes. We both are kind of emotional. And I, um, he really, I think, wanted to bring all of the different parts of his really uh, textured life story, uh, the parts that he may be really related to you know, various parts of the story. Yeah. And he was just ready to go. And all I had to do was you know, say, okay, well, I, I kind of want you to do this in this scene. And he's like, okay. Yeah. And, he, and he did it. He yeah. did it. He's, he's transformed. I mean, yeah. it's really amazing. And I, I love his collaboration too with the younger cast because not, there's not a lot of, you know, when you look at it, he's a veteran actor. He could just be yeah. like, Ugh, you know, but you could see just from watching, he must've been very generous with them, I think. I totally agree. I think he was generous. I think also the fact that um, Jackson White, who plays Charlie, so Charlie and Mickey are at odds. Their yeah. character, what they're trying to get, they're they're at odds, and that just all worked. They're they're completely different um, experiences as people and as performers, and that kind of added to that chemistry. Um, and and Kelsey and Julia, who played. Her. 
Julia. I was obsessed with the affair as her portrayal of Whitney. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I know. Great. She's so she, stunning. Yeah, yeah. She's so terrific. And Kelsey actually said she's, she had a Carol Lombard quality to her. Wow. Um, and yeah, he really was taken with her. So the fact that they were kind of a struggling father daughter in the movie, um, it, there was a sweetness to them, even though their scenes aren't really together. Right. Until the end. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, it was really fun to watch. And William Fickner, Fickner who's always fantastic. You really did um, gather a great cast. And, and Eric you. Jackson, I mean, yeah. Like when you have that line in the movie about her eyes. Yeah, that's the yeah. first thing that's so striking about her. Oh, she, yeah, this, she, the camera really loves her. Um, Betty May Casting, so Mary Vernu, who I've worked with a number of times, they're just geniuses. And um, I, Fickner is somebody I had worked with before yeah. and love him. He just comes up with all this crazy shit and you're just like, oh my God, he's, <laughs> he's so good. He's so fun. Yeah, he is. It looked like you had a good time, I'm sure. I, you know, before we wrap up, I wanna ask you because, um, you know, you're an amazing husband, man. Um, look, I never missed an episode of either Boardwalk Empire, The Sopranos, of course he wrote The Wolf of Wall Street. I wanna know, do you feed off each other? Like, do you give each other advice on the things that you choose, and does he come to you and say, I'm gonna work on this, and you go to him and get his advice? I, what, oh, a, what a power couple you are, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you. I, uh, he's a genius, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, for a long time, I was very intimidated. So uh, we, but we started together as, a, as working. We yeah. did not start together romantically. So I think the fact that, because people ask me that all the time, how do you work with your husband? Because we work on a ton of stuff together. And, and I think that the reason that we work so well together is because that was the first impression. I'm going to give you notes <laughs> and you're going to take them. And he takes my notes really well and I'm no longer intimidated um, because he knows I just totally have his back. And of course I only want him to succeed, which believe me, he doesn't need me for, but- um, But I'm sure he feels the same about you too. He, I mean, come on. Absolutely. And yeah. he actually is the one who kind of gave me the kick in the ass to go forward with this instinct to direct the movie. Um, he really believed I could do it. And he kind of put his hands on my back for a while until I got the guts to go to Milan and Michael and Steve and say, uh, I think I'm supposed to do this, so. Uh, good for you. Well, I hope we're gonna see more. So the directing bug, is it bit? Are we gonna see more? I think I think we're gonna see more. Should I be lucky enough? Couple things I'm eyeing and I'm really, I, I did have an amazing time. If I know material as well as I, knew the space between I will uh, I feel like I, I feel confident I could do it again I'm sure you oh I can't. yes you can do it again Rachel you can absolutely well listen it's been a pleasure talking to you today thank you so much for your time and uh best thank of luck with everything and when the borders open come visit me in Toronto and we'll have a coffee or something okay hell yeah I would love it <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much Take thanks care. Bonnie bye, -bye. bye. bye.